Welcome to this podcast. My name is Paul and Peter Edwin Scott. I'm very pleased to be here today. We are continuing our journey through Daniel chapter 8. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the King of the universe, real supreme at this present moment, friends. The Son of God is every man, woman and child upon this orb. Everything depends upon the Son of the Father's love. All judgment is committed to the Son. Nobody knows the Son except the Father. And nobody knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son is pleased to reveal him. I do so trust my listeners have been listening to the previous broadcasts. It's such an expansive book, the book of Daniel. Um, therein is great wisdom, great revelation, knowledge, um, great understanding. On more than one occasion, Daniel is told that the things therein are sealed, only to be revealed at the end of time, the end of the days. Daniel is uh, probably the book that, 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 that describes the seven year, the imminent seven year tribulation more so than any other book of scripture. Also, it tells us that there's a great event midway through the tribulation, which is where persons that tend to get very technical uh, about, about what we call eschatology last time events uh, start obsessing about minutiae around what happens at the beginning, middle or end of the tribulation uh, and start to become divisive with their brethren in Christ. Um, those that are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. The Holy Spirit will lead you to unity and peace and love and grace, not contention and strife. Of a truth, many professing followers of the Son of God um, have made an idol uh, of uh, doctrine, made an idol of their particular, particular doctrinal hobby horses. And if you're not prepared to ride their hobby horse, they won't be friends with you. Well, that's not right at all. The death of Christ is the point of gathering. Remember thou me. Eat this bread in remembrance of me, the Lord said. Drink this blood for as often as you eat this bread and drink this blood, you do remember me until I come. Whoso eateth the flesh and drinketh the blood of Jesus hath eternal life and is passed from death unto life. Christ is that eternal life that was with the Father. So, friends, Interesting as though doctrine is, um, everything is about the person and, and character and attributes of loving kindness of Elohim Yahovah, the Adonai Adepts, the Lord of the whole earth. Christianity is about a person, not a religion or a doctrine. And so mortals must learn to appreciate and worship Elohim Yahovah alone and his son. Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus of the Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, and be agreeable to the Son of God. Is written, kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. Daniel chapter 8. One could talk for quite some time on these chapters, friends, and the things contained therein. Um, if anyone wants to get involved in the conversation, my email is in the description of this video. You can also comment below the video um, and get involved in the conversation if you so wish. Um, so, certainly, the theme of the semi tribulation and the two lots of three and a half years. Are, are clearly described in the book of Daniel. Um, yes, yes, some, some practical points about what's going on at the present time. In the last few days, um, I don't know how much my listeners know about modern history, but Iran was run by the Shah of Iran until around 1978. And he was 
was an American and British friendly man and he had control of Iran. And then there was an uprising, a Mohammedan uprising, and he had to flee the country with his wife and his son. And his son, the son of the last king of Iran, the last Shah of Iran, currently lives in Maryland in America. Uh, and this week he's been in Israel and he's met with Benjamin Netanyahu and many others and he's prayed at the Wailing Wall of the Temple in Jerusalem and he's talked about bringing the Cyrus Accords where if, if, if peace is restored between Iran and Israel then, then a time, which it will be, um, then there will be, uh, there will be universal peace upon the planet for a thousand years in the not too distant future, friends. Um, and certainly it's very significant uh, that the, the son of the last king of Iran, you could say the prince of Persia, um, is, I believe he's still currently in Israel at this moment. He's, he's been there for a few days. And um, you can look up this up, this up in the news, friends. Um, and, uh, and there he is with his wife and he's met with Benjamin Netanyahu and Benjamin Ben Jar Mean Netan Yahu is literally the son of Jehovah's right hand, Ben Jar Mean. Ben Yar Mean. Netan is gift of Yahu. So the very name of the current and long term Prime Minister of Israel is an entirely divine name. Son of Jehovah's right hand, the gift of Yahu. It all has to do with the sovereignty of Elohim Yahovah through his son, ruling Israel through this man in recent years. And Yahu is the name of God. Yahu. Yahu, Jahu, Jehovah, Yahovah, Yahovah, Yehovah, Yehovah, Yahovah, Yahu. See? Yahu. Now, so it's a great uh, portion of the book. Um, and let me see. Daniel 7 introduces uh, the Ancient of Days coming and uh, bringing in righteousness and judgment and what's good and true because the appointed time has arrived and good people possess the earth, the saints possess the kingdom. You see, the lamb's wife, the redeemed. And the horn that makes war with the saints is destroyed by the Ancient of Days and his coming. In Daniel 7, and then when we come to Daniel 8, we have this mighty, mighty vision that Daniel has. And I suppose it's noteworthy once more to mention that, um, that in Daniel 8, Belshazzar is still alive, whereas at the end of chapter uh, 5, Belshazzar was assassinated. So Daniel 8, uh, Daniel 8 goes back to before Daniel 5, at the time of Daniel 5, because Belshazzar is king, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, you see. So he sees this ram and he sees the he-goat coming from the west, which doesn't touch the ground, so that's aerial supremacy. The application to the pr present time and also the will of God. Uh, the ram with two horns, to some degrees, the Mohammedan nations and the, the enemies of Israel. Um, and it's no coincidence, of course, that this... Uh, the he-goat came from the west, you see, with a notable horn between his eyes, and he came to the ram that had the two horns, you see, um, and destroyed him. So what else do I want to say about the present time? Yes, so, so it's, it's, it's very noteworthy that, that right now, as I say, the son of the last king of Iran uh, is currently in Israel and he loves Israel. And uh, he's waiting for peace to be between Iran and Israel. He's, he's at the moment exiled from Israel, uh, from, uh, from Iran. He's the, the, the son of the last Shah. He's, he's exiled from Iran and he lives in Maryland in America. But he's currently in Israel. Um, 
And then, of course, we come to this business of, of chronology. We have for the first time in Daniel, in Daniel 8, 24, 1300 evenings and mornings, then shall the sanctuary be vindicated. See? Um, now, that's roughly just under seven years. Uh, we work, work that out. Um, and what I wanted to point out is at the end of Daniel, uh, the very end of Daniel, Daniel 12, we have here, um, from the time that the continual sacrifice is taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be 1290 days, which is roughly three and a half years. Blessed is he that waits and comes to the 1335 days, which again is similar to three and a half years. And there's 45 days between those. You can see that at the very end of Daniel. But do thou go thy way till the end, and thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. So the theme of the end of the days is very much one of the, one of the one of the prominent noticeable things in the book of Daniel. Uh, and so very, very much uh, tells you in verse 9 of Daniel 12, go thy way, Daniel, for these words are closed and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and be made white and be refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly. None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And then just before that in, uh, in Daniel 7, I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river. He held up his right hand and his left hand to the heavens and swore by him that liveth forever, that it is for a time, times, and a half a time. And when the scattering of the power of the holy people should be accomplished, all these things shall be finished. Well, a time, times, and a half a time, that's three and a half years. Time is a year, times is two years and a half, it's half a year, three and a half years. And then it talks about the regathering of the, of the Israelites, which of course, the Alayah, as the Yahudim, the Jews call it, they've been being regathered now um, for a generation, you see. So, so that portion there at the end of Daniel 12, or halfway through, I'm just going to read Daniel 12, uh, is very much talking about the present time that we live in. Um, and again in verse 4, Thou, Daniel, close the words, seal the book, till the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And of course, at the present time, global travel and, and localised travel has never been as prolific as it is now, with all the trains and buses and aeroplanes and bicycles and motorcycles and cars and vans and all these kinds of things. Um, there's more transportation of humans now than ever before in the history of mankind. And the proliferation of knowledge um, is, 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 is great at the present time. Now, so just to come back to Daniel 8, um, yesterday we got as far as around halfway through and we saw um, that a man's voice uh, from the banks of the Ulai called to Gabriel. So I think it's safe to assume this is the Lord Jesus, the son of the eternal God, um, calling to Gabriel, saying, make Daniel to understand the vision. And the angel Gabriel came near. And again, this is one of the rare portions of scripture where angels are given names. Um, and further on in the, in the book, we have Michael mentioned. And of course, we have Michael mentioned um, in Revelation as well. So Gabriel comes to Daniel and causes him to understand. Um, and Daniel falls on his face. And Gabriel says, understand thou, son of man, for the vision is for the time of the end. See? 
So Daniel is given a vision of the overview uh, of time from eternity, you see. Uh, one of the interesting features of the book of Daniel is the overview. Uh, that is to say that uh, at, at that time, there was no doubt significance uh, around Persia and Israel uh, and other nations round about. But most assuredly, what we're reading about is the time of the end that we live in now. And we're in the very closing days uh, of this current age. We are seeing now the complete finish of the rule of mortals and the complete finish of the rule of demons. This is now the rule of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus the Christ. That's what this is. Now, so we see that, that Daniel is in a deep stupor with his face towards the ground. Um, and the angel touched him and set him up where he stood. This happens two or three times in the book of Daniel, and it's uh, similar to what happens to the Apostle John in Revelation 1. The Apostle John uh, was, a, was the beloved disciple. He's the only disciple that's described as having laid in the chest of Jesus. Um, and John's writings have a pe peculiar beauty and appeal. It's the divine side, the secret side, there's no failure in the Gospel of John. Uh, there's not a lot of mention of death. There's not a lot of mention of the devil. Everything's the sovereign side, the divine side, the secret side. Um, and John, who laid in the bosom of Jesus, and wrote 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, the book of John, and the entire book of Revelation, when he saw the ascended Lord Jesus the Christ, uh, the Ancient of Days incarnate, he fell at his feet as dead. So, you know, so it's just a similar kind of thing here that, that Daniel experiences with Gabriel. You know, he's falling on his, on his face and he's in a deep stupor. The angel calls him to stand and gives him understanding. He says, I will make you know what shall be at the end of the indignation? For at the set time, the end shall be. So this is another feature of the book of Daniel, the appointed time, the set time. You see, friends, mortals think that God doesn't work. Well, God is constantly working. His entire sovereign counsels constantly. Otherwise, mortals would be dead. Uh, mortals are far more loved and delivered than they understand. Elohim, Yahovah, Adonai, that's the Lord of the whole earth, uh, is working throughout this world at the present time. Um, and if you read Mark chapter one, you'll see 11 times in that one chapter, straight away, suddenly, immediately. Go and read it yourselves, friends. God works suddenly and supremely and sovereignly. You see? And so God has set the appointed time. And once again, the next great event on this planet is a global physical resurrection of hundreds and hundreds of millions of human beings that had their faith and trust in the blood atonement and the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ that will immediately be clothed with immortality and will immediately physically ascend through the skies with this current living generation of Bible-believing Christians. And so shall they ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort, encourage, assure, and console each other with these words. So now it tells you, the ram you saw with the two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. So that would represent the Mohammedan interests of Iran. Persia is modern-day Iran. Media is countries like uh, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan. It's all the stands up to the north uh, of Iran. They are large the Mohammedan lands. Um, the rough goat is the king of Greece, and the great horn that was between his eyes 
is the first king, you see. So as I outlined the other day, at the present moment, America has three big military bases in Greece. Now, in the modern era, when countries like Britain, America, Russia and others have military bases, what they're saying is we're in charge here. That's what they're saying. So whilst Greece in and of itself isn't a particularly mighty power upon the earth, the United States of America most certainly is. Um, and so uh, the rulers of nations that are compliant with America, they often be, they're often spokespersons for America and that's how they gain favor with America because America is the, uh, is the cookie monster of the uh, of the other of the world in a sense because it has the cookie jar, the the mighty American petro dollar, um, and the uh, influence of the American government and the American civil service over lots of other nations. It has global hegemony, um, you see, and so America's influence is well known amongst all nations upon earth. The nations upon earth that don't comply with America's foreign policy, uh, sooner or later they get consequences for that because America is able to cause other countries to go against them economically, politically, and sometimes militarily. Um, and so by the means of what they may call diplomacy, coercion is established. Um, and America not only has military rule of the planet, but also geopolitical and geomilitary influence, largely speaking. So when it says the rough goes to King of Greece and the great horn that was between his eyes is the first king, certainly a type of that is what we know at the present time, which is American influence ruling over a country and really the politicians in that place are really subservient to America, you see. So that's the kind of thing that you're reading about there. And it tells you there that that horn was broken, but four stood up in its stead, you see. So an example of that, for instance, would be when, when Germany was the most powerful nation in Europe, its horn was broken mercifully at the end of World War II. And then we saw Britain, France, uh, Spain, and, and a, a resurrected Germany, as it were, uh, being bearing rule uh, in Europe and uh, to all intents and purposes uh, across the globe in, in cahoots with, with America. So it became America and Europe that were the main influences, but the, the growth of, of industry, population and economy in places like China, India, and Pakistan and parts of Africa has changed that global dynamic in recent years. And then, of course, you have Japan, places like that. Um, but certainly that's what we're talking about, conglomerates of nations. So it, it's the changing influences of different kingdoms with different interests, different social, religious and cultural and empirical interest. That's really what you're reading about in Daniel 8. Uh, and and, and we, we see this, we see this very much. I mean, you know, it, it's very interesting, for example, that Great Britain created what we call Saudi Arabia, which is now a very, very, very wealthy and influential and powerful tiny, tiny little country that Britain basically invented at the beginning of the 20th century, 100 years ago. Um, and there it is, you know. Um, and and they, are, um, they are Shite Muslims, that's what they are. And the Iranians are Sunni Muslims, you see, and the Syrians are Wahhabi Muslims. Um, but many of the Iranian people, wonderful, wonderful people, friends, don't think I'm against Iranian persons. There are millions of wonderful, wonderful persons in Iran. And indeed, amazingly enough, there are thousands and thousands of Jews that, are, that live very happily and have done for generations in Iran at the present moment. Um, and there are also thousands and thousands and thousands of Christians that live in Iran very happily at the moment. It's the regime that's wicked. 
Pepsi is a Mohammedan, uh, oppressive, anti-Christian, bestial, false prophetic system. You see, but at the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I ran, the devil runs. You see, men and devils hide from Elohim Yehovah. Elohim Yehovah does not hide from men and devils. Men and devils hide from Elohim Yehovah, friends. Then, now, and always. You see? So the devil and devilish uh, regimes and men, uh, they run, you see. And that's what happens. The Son of God is revealed at the end of the seven-year tribulation and all the enemies of Israel are destroyed and their eyes melt away in their sockets and their dead bodies will rot and stink on the mountains of Israel. All the enemies of Israel will be destroyed. They'll be destroyed by the breath of the lips of the Son of God. The very words of Jesus will destroy all his enemies. Now, now it tells you here, at the latter time of their kingdom, verse 23, when the transgressors shall have come to the full, a king of bold countenance and understanding riddles shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy marvelously and shall prosper and shall practice and shall destroy the mighty ones and the people of the saints. And through his cunning shall he cause crack to prosper in his hand. He will magnify himself in his heart and by prosperity will corrupt many. And he will stand up against the prince of prince, the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. So this is telling you that there'll be a human being at the end of time uh, that will be powerful, but not with his own power. So he'd be like a representative of another great earthly power, you see. And he'll be very outspoken. And it'll be very bold countenance, which means when you see him, like, oh, yes, just the thing. Oh, yes, don't you know it's me? Oh, yes, me, 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 me. You know, it'll all be about him. And he'll be, he'll be clever, intelligent, and understand riddles. Um, a type of man like Vladimir Putin. Uh, a type like that. Now, he is a very intelligent man, let me tell you. Um, when when put, put in for all his flaws, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very intelligent and articulate man. And when he does debates with the press or with anyone, he will sit for hours and hours. Uh, you won't get any of the Western leaders doing that. They're foppish, feckless flip-floppers, men like Johnson and Sunak and Macron. Uh, and Sturgeon, that, that you wouldn't get any of them sitting debating for hours. But Putin does. He understands and is prepared to talk about a global hegemony, global politics. And uh, certainly, uh, uh, I have to say, I'm not best pleased with Vladimir Putin as a man. However, the fact remains uh, that, that, that he's pretty upfront about how things are going and how things are upon the earth. He, he understands, you know, and he's prepared to talk about it. Um, and at the present time, of course, Rus Russophobia, uh, McCarthyism is very much alive and well. Anti-Russian sentiment is, is a job uh, that the Daily Mail and New York Times and the, the world press has taken up to be anti-Russian when in actual fact it's American empirical ambitions in Europe that have been provoking Russia for decades. This war in Ukraine is a war between America and Russia, and it's been joined in by the Germans and the French and the British. But there's no question about it, it's American and European empire against Russia, and they've been provoking Russia for decades. See? And, and, and any country that, that's friendly towards America 
sooner or later ends up with thousands of American soldiers and bombs and choppers and, and bombers and guns and weapons in it. Basically becomes a, a, another state of America, in a sense. You know, ge they are ge geo-militarily, to all intents and purposes, America. See? Um, and, and the American public have been brainwashed into thinking that Russia is somehow an enemy of America, but in some ways it's become a self-fulfilling prophecy because of the, the Russophobia in America and the anti-Russian press. Um, there, there are millions in America that just think Russia is this enemy, um, and the American government has made it, made it thus. If you broke, prod a bear, sooner or later it will turn and rip you. But anyway, so, so we have here, remember, this is not Vladimir Putin that he's talking about here, because it tells you he's not standing in his own power. So it tells you this will be a very clever uh, world leader that's not standing in his own power, but he destroys marvelously uh, and attacks the same. In a sense, Daniel 8 comes before Daniel 7, because in Daniel 7, and 7, of course, is the number of completion, perfection, heaven, and entirety, we have the Ancient of Days coming at the appointed time uh, and uh, bringing righteousness and justice to the earth and to the saints of the Most High. Okay. So what happens is here... Uh, we have a wicked earthly ruler uh, that is against the Jews uh, and tries to destroy them, and he corrupts and deceives many. The mortals that are deceived, they become deceivers. Those that are in Christ Jesus, they become true. They have to speak according to scripture, the, the testimony, the truth. Those that do not receive the love of the truth with meekness will be destroyed without hand. Elohim Yavar has sent a strong delusion upon the earth. So we have here, this man will stand up against the Prince of Princes, which is the Lord Jesus, but he shall be broken without hand. So that's the entire sovereign dominical authority of the Son of God. The vision of the evening and the morning, which has been told, is true. But close out the vision for it's for many days to come. Now, there's something, well, I will use the word cosmic here, friends, in this revelation of verse 26. Um, how would I attempt to explain it? So, in Elohim Yehovah, You'll live, move, and have your being. And Elohim Yahweh lives and moves and has his being in all of you. All mortals must express the character, nature, and attributes of Jesus to be agreeable to God. However, with the heart, man believeth to righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. So, for those that are tasteful to the uh, Saviour, those that are salvageable by the salvation, those that are agreeable to the King, those that are subject to the King, uh, those will have immortality. You can't have Jesus as your Lord if he's not your master. And you can't have Jesus as your King if you are not subject say Jesus see Jesus is king mortals are subject well in a great kingdom mortals must be subject to the king or they will be under the wrath of the king as this man is that will be destroyed without hand so we have the vision of the evening and the morning I tend to think that Elohim Yahovah, friend, 
that uh, at the very dawn of time knew precisely what would happen from beginning to end. The Alpha and the Omega, the Aleph and the Tau, the Rishon Acheron, the first and the last. So it's quite interesting, the vision of the evening and the morning. I think it speaks of the morning speaks of the dawning of creation upon the earth. The evening speaks of the end of time. Uh, and Daniel is given a revelation that's for the end of time and was told to close up the vision for it's for many days to come. Now, there are many visions in scripture that are, that are open and unsealed. But this particular vision in Daniel, particularly Daniel 8, is a vision that's closed. It's a closed up vision. It's for many days to come. Of course, those days are now. This is the day of salvation. This is the time for the reign of the Son of God. This is the time for the reign of the Lord Jesus the Christ. This is the end of this wicked age, the end of the rule of mortals and the end of the rule of demons. This is the rule of the sovereign of the universe, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Daniel fainted and was sick. Then he rose up and did the king's business. He was astonished at the vision, but nobody understood it. That's because it was sealed until the end of time, which is now. Now, the secret of Yahovah is with those that revere him. Um, Yahavah doeth nothing but first reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. So those that read the scriptures, stay in prayer under the blood of the spirit, are agreeable to the King Jesus. They have revelation. And as we read in the last chapter of Daniel, the wise will understand, but the wicked will not understand, because they're deluded. They have not received the love of the truth. But the righteous will understand and be wise. Those that win the souls are wise. So Daniel fainted and was sick. We see this two or three times in Daniel. But he got up, he rose up in the resurrection power of Jesus. And he did the king's business. Are you doing the king's business today, listeners? Are you consoling, comforting, encouraging, and inspiring others? Are you doing the king's business? Daniel was astonished at the vision, but nobody understood it. We'll be back soon with the broadcast, friends. Stay on the blood in the spirit, in the scripture, in prayer, worshipping, being thankful, and go on quietly in the truth. Um, and we'll be back soon with the broadcast. Baruch, Hava, Hashem, Adonai, Yehovah, Eloha, Yayim. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of Adonai, Yehovah, Eloha, Yayim. The sovereign of the whole universe. Baruch, Hava, Hashem, Adonai, Yehovah, Eloha, The Melik, Ashallah.